Recently, I found myself getting into a whole lot of webtoons like Unordinary, The Girl from Random Chatting, Painkiller, and of course, this beautiful story, I Love You. So today, I'd like to discuss and review the webtoon I Love You by Quimchi. Links to this webtoon and ways to support her will be the first links in the description, so I encourage you to do that. And while I'm at it, while this is a review, at the time of this recording, the story is nowhere near finished. So throughout this video, please keep in mind this is a review of a current currently incomplete work. Take some of my criticisms with a grain of salt, and if you want me to cover those webtoons I just mentioned in the beginning of this video, leave a comment and simply drop a like on the video. Either will do. Enjoy the video! After her parents go through a painful divorce, Shinae Yu is separated from her sister and mother who wants nothing to do with her and her father. Heartbroken and rejected by the people she loved the most, she gives up on being social and forgoes romance altogether. But when she throws a drink into a stranger ruining his clothes, the wheels of fate start to turn. Shine's whole world starts to change, but will she accept it so easily? This is I Love You. I Love You is a webtoon by Miss Quimchi, which started in April of 2017 and has 89 episodes at the time of this recording. Currently, the series has been on hiatus, though, since January 31st of 2019. And with how popular this series is and it being a featured webtoon, I doubt that the series will be on hiatus for forever. The story of this webtoon is highly highly entertaining and immersive. I went into this webtoon not expecting much but a basic and generic romance story, but I left with a whole newfound respect for Quimchi and her work. Because while on the outside this seems like a basic romance, that assumption is simply just not true. With its plot, characters, which we'll dive into in just a moment, and pacing, I was more often than not craving the next chapter and probably staying up just a little too late reading because of this. It obviously has that just one more chapter mystique around it, and it's obvious as to why. Shine Yu's whole journey is one you want to see her grow from. Turning away a social life in love to not have herself get hurt again is something people absolutely seem to go through these days. Shine, our titular character, is so relatable in this aspect, and the series uses these well-established fears of Shine as the basis of her character. When she gets involved with Yang Ji, Kosuke, and even Misura's Hirahara, it's pretty obvious she just wants to be left alone and have nothing to do with these people. People. These people are messing up her calm, unsociable, and lonely life which she has come to sadly love and find comfort in. And it's fascinating the way Shine sees this and the way her friends see this whole situation. Shine sees this all through the eyes of someone who's been beaten down by life. She hates that she's dragged into these situations by the Hiraharas and Yongji, but her friends see this as something they wish that they could have happen to them. Because from their perspective, it's exciting to be around these guys. For Shine though, it's, it's it's another annoyance, another way to just get beaten down by life once more. But like I said earlier, you want to see Shine get out more and do more because she's the plucky underdog. She's been through a whole lot of pain and you want to see her grow from that pain and get what she deserves, which is to be happy for once. I Love You tells the story of a romance you want to see succeed so badly. Badly. Someone who got the rug pulled out from under her. Someone who just didn't deserve anything that she went through. And I think therein lies the reason I Love You is so enthralling and hard to put down. Overall, every single one of these characters are so well written and memorable. First off, we have Shine, who is my favorite character of this series. She's down to earth and relatable. She's got her friends, but for the most part stays out of the way and to herself. From the start, she has only gone through a lot of pain in her life, and it doesn't stop even throughout the series. She'll get into mishaps after mishaps. This makes Shine even more of an underdog, as it's obvious she just doesn't deserve any of these terrible misfortunes. Why I think think Shine Yu is such a good character, and a great main character in general, is because you can easily relate to her and her struggles. She's likable from her cheap clothes to her resilience when she bounces back from terrible events happening to her. As well as her fears, they're relatable and understandable to most people. I mean, who really wants to risk going through what Shine went through not once, but twice? It's a flaw, but 
Not one that is a mark on her character, but one that makes her character more human. Then we have Young Ji, who is probably most known for the Google search term Young Ji abs. In all seriousness though, Young Ji's most notable aspect is that while on the outside he looks like a brick house, he's got a very vulnerable side to him that's tangible. This tenderness from his character is what makes him so lovable. It's obvious from the reader's perspective that Young Ji is someone who doesn't have a lot of real friends, so when he finds someone Someone who who sees him for who he is, he tries his best to keep them close. This is where Shine comes in. Her coldness towards Yang Ji is, oddly enough, a trait that Yang Ji really appreciates. He lives in a different world where people like him are used as tools. But Shine sees Yang Ji as just another dude, nothing more. She doesn't want a thing from Yang Ji, so Yang Ji in turn trusts Shine. Then we have Kosuke, or as Shine calls him, Q-Tip. He's also a very good character because he's kind of similar to Shine in some ways. They both turn away romance and are very unsociable, but where they're different is Kosuke turns those things away because they're forced upon him. Megan Cho, as an example, follows him around all the time trying to get closer to him, but Kosuke rejects Megan at each turn as she's more or less obsessed with him in an unhealthy way. Basically, Kosuke is manipulated by his mother, Misra's hero. Hara, who is a cold businesswoman and family politician. Kosuke seems to want to break free of his commitments and experience something real as he's only ever experienced the cold world of business. Which is where Shine comes in, as Shine is real and not cold, unlike Mrs. Hirahara and his job. Other characters I'd like to spotlight is Shine's father, who may not be in the series too much, is still an awesome addition and helps humanize Shine even further. As well, Shine's friends, Maya and Ko, who serve as a mediary to Shine's newfound friendship with Kosuke, Yongji, and Dieter. And speaking of Dieter, he's probably my favorite side character. His backstory is explored pretty well, and because of that, adds another dimension to the series' already pretty amazing cast of characters. Overall, I love Yu's cast as easily the best feature of this whole story. Each character gets a moment to shine, and each of them shines bright. Never do I feel the characters hamper anything in this series, and I want to root for pretty much all of them in some capacity, especially Mistress Hirahara, who I want to root to fail, because she's just so dang evil. I'm not sure if there is someone else who handles the art for this or coloring, so I apologize in advance if I miss something. But I really like all of the character designs in this webtoon. I can't go ahead and compare them to others because I am new to webtoons in general, but I love the designs for the main three a lot. Yang Ji in particular I think looks pretty freaking awesome. But I think that goes for most characters. I like how Quim Chi shows a wide variety of different outfits and hairstyles on these characters. It really makes the story feel more down to earth, which I think really complements this kind of story. In general, I think this webtoon looks great. And as you're seeing, these are some of my favorite designs from I Love You. I'll let the art speak for itself. If you haven't already, or if you're just curious, check out I Love You. While it is a romance, it's much more than that to me. It's a show about a damaged person finding happiness after having the short end of the stick for literally all of her life. It's enthralling hard to put down and has really well fleshed out characters. The setting and story are both down to earth, realistic and endearing. I can safely recommend I Love You to just about anyone out there looking for a story with good characters and good writing, and especially if you like romance. Beware though, as of the time of this release, the series is on a hiatus and does end on a rather frustrating cliffhanger. But if you're patient, go ahead and read it. I know I am patiently waiting for the day when this great series finally returns to webtoons. With that being said, thanks everybody for watching. Make sure to click on some of these videos if you find them interesting. Make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like the video, comment down below what your thoughts are on I Love You, and know that I have a Patreon. Everything is in the description. See you later. Bye bye.